Hi, this is Tony Reed with Rattling the Cage for Tap Out and MMA Worldwide Magazine. Joined here by Mr. Hoist Gracie, a man that needs no introduction, an icon, a pioneer of the sport, pioneer of Gracie Jiu Jitsu, one of the founding fathers of the UFC. Mr. Hoist Gracie, how are you doing today? Good, man. Good. Good, good. Thank you for having me. I know you're here for a seminar. I don't want to hold him up too long. He's got a lot going on, but I, <laughs> I appreciate the time. So uh, you, were, you were the one chosen to carry the Gracie name and Gracie Jiu Jitsu as a whole into the combat sports world in America in UFC 1. You stated that you didn't feel pressure in doing so. So what were your thoughts and feelings at the time about entering the competition, maybe your responsibility and your performance? And if you think about that, you, I would never walk in the ring. So there was no being a Gracie. It's just, okay, I want my turn. When can I have my turn? There's so many of us. It's like, I want my chance. Please, give me a chance. So I'm not thinking about what if I lose, what if my performance is bad. There's no such a thing. Thought. So what are your thoughts looking back now, at, at just at that time period, at, at your performance, the outcomes of the events? What are your thoughts looking back on that time? Couldn't be any better. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> so uh, I'm currently... Three, three guys in one night. Couldn't More than one, right? <laughs> Second, second <laughs> yeah. UFC was four, yeah. yes. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So I'm currently re-watching every UFC event, starting with UFC 1. Uh, being such a huge part of that history, what would you want me or any fan to take away from the early days of the sport that you helped build? There was no gloves, no time limit, no weight division, no rules. There was one, one style against another. The Grace Jiu-Jitsu is the best self-defense style out there. Absolutely. So you were involved in a number of epic fights in the early history of NHB and MMA. Obviously the Shamrock fight, the fight against Sever and the Chemo fight, the hour and a half against Sagaraba at Pride 2000 Grand Prix. Which fight stands out most to you? Is there a fight that you maybe that holds sentimental value more than others or one that you kind of hold more dear than other fights? I don't career? know, man. They're all impressive. Look at Ken Shamrock. 220 pounds. Uh, more than that, yeah. Rip. Then seven, 260, 265, All-American wrestler. Kim, 250 pounds. Cheers on that one. <laughs> Brawler. Akibono, 6'8", 490. Sakura, so they're all, they're all important. They're so all. every time out, you're basically just proving that what you do works, basically, right? The basis and foundation. It's, of it. it's the, the foundation, the basics of Grace Jiu-Jitsu. Self-defense art. It's not. I'm gonna win when my opponent makes a mistake. So, uh, do you follow the sport of MMA as a fan at all? And what are your thoughts on the growth of MMA over the past few years? Do you have any fighters that you enjoy watching today, maybe from afar? Man, I like Nick and Nate Diaz, Gilbert Hernandez, that whole group over there. Man. Scrap Pack. <laughs> reminds me a lot of my family. They don't take BS from anybody. See. They are there to fight, they are there to win, they are there to win. They don't walk away, they don't choose opponents. I like that. St. Pierre is very good at using strategy. So there's a lot of good fighters. Anderson Silva, very good at using strategy too. So there's a lot of, the guys are on the top, man. They, they know that's why they're on the top. They know how to use strategy. They, they train, they get up, they train, they're growing all over the world. They know why they are awesome job. Mainstream sport now. Yeah, absolutely. So, do you keep in touch with any of the people you worked with back in the early days of the UFC that we might be surprised to hear about? Other than the obvious people you might keep in touch with as far as family members and whatnot, but are there any guys you keep in touch with that nope. we'd be surprised to hear? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. They're not my friends. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. So, could you share a behind-the-scenes story from your days in the sport that the average fan might never hear about? Is there something you kind of a tidbit that you could share with us that maybe hasn't been said before? <laughs> you know, you no, know. I already said all the stories, man. You Not guys know them all. Yeah, all right. So, Not hiding anything. Yeah. So, uh, we'll talk about a little bit about your history. We covered the UFC a little bit there. You moved to the States with your brother, Orion, when you were 18. Did you ever dream that your family would build something of this magnitude that reaches all around the world? Did you ever, like when you first moved there, did you ever think that things would be at the level they are today? Imagine Babe Ruth. Babe Ruth I've, I've actually compared to you to Babe Ruth. Imagine him going to Brazil, and people will be like, and you are who again? And you play what? <laughs> Very 
he'll be like, wow, I'm the number one best all-time best baseball player ever. And they don't know me in Brazil because we don't know baseball. We don't have baseball in Brazil. So that's how we felt when we came to America. Wow, everybody in Brazil knows who we are. But in America, nobody knows. So it's just a question of time and educating the crowd. That is so interesting. So I've actually said that before. Like the, the pioneers of the sport, the guys like you that build it, like you are going to be remembered in history as the Babe Ruths or Michael Jordans or Wayne Gretzky's or whatever sport you want to equate it to. I, I've actually said that you are the Babe Ruth of MMA. So it's just, it's just interesting that you kind of equate it that way too. That's very <laughs> interesting. So um, you began Jiu-Jitsu at a very early age by playing around with your father, Helio. What is your earliest memory from that time? as far as your earliest mem memory on the mat or with your father as far as in the jiu-jitsu aspect of things? Just going to the academy and just hang out. Just hang out. This, that was a playground for us. Going to play, I'm not going to train, going to play, hang out. My friends are there. That's interesting. So uh, actually, I've actually talked to Lang Faforian about this project that I'm doing now. And uh, we've touched on all kinds of topics. Uh, as far as what your family's built, what the UFC's become, that type of thing. But the one topic that he was most excited and passionate about was the Gracie diet. He even went as far to say to me that if he had to choose Gracie Jiu-Jitsu or the diet, he would actually choose the diet. Can you talk about how that aspect of things, the diet, affects your life and how that... I don't know, man. I prefer Gracie Jiu-Jitsu because I like to kick ass. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> but if you're sick, you can't kick ass. So, I mean... But no, it's not exactly a diet, it's more of an eating habits. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a healthy way of eating. We just combine the food, we eat pretty much everything, we just combine it with easy digestion. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So uh, speaking of advancing in the Gracie history a little bit, can you, tell, can you share a story maybe from the garage days? Is there a story you could share with us from your time there, maybe something that kind of comes to the top of mind? Yeah, we used to teach classes. Every half an hour, it was a new student. So it's a, it was busy, man. Then we got so busy, that's when Harlem decided to open up the Grace Academy. Mm -hmm. We had like 100, 150 students in the waiting list. It's crazy. Yeah. Take the class. That's interesting. So I know you've had some some celebrities as students in the past. Is there a story you could share with uh, a celebrity that we might know that, I mean, obviously Ed O'Neill is very yeah, prominent was, celebrity that's uh, yes. prominent. Chuck Norris went to the, the, the garage. Uh, um, Jim Kelly, who worked on the Internet Dragon, who was me, who was in the class with me back in the garage. There's loads of people that came way before. Paul Vunak was there too before. So, back in the garage days, man. It's better you have like YouTube and stuff like that <laughs> back then, right? <laughs> so, uh, that's pretty much all I have. Is there anything we haven't covered that maybe you haven't been, had a chance to talk about in an interview or magazine or anything like that? Is there anything that just, for every reason, hasn't come up that you'd like to kind of address? <laughs> it's all been covered, you, right? You just got to ask. Man. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, that's, that's all I have. Um, Mr. Hoist Gracie, it's been a pleasure and honor. Thank you so much Thank for your you. time. Thank you. Tony Reed, Riding on the Cage, Tap Out, and MMA Worldwide Magazine, signing off. Thank you. Thank you so much.